In our previous video, we tackled the exciting news around the potential release, price, and specs of the upcoming PS5 Slim, but today we're going to switch gears a bit. I've been thinking a lot about what I hope this new iteration will not feature. Yeah, you heard it right. I'm talking about the aspects I sincerely hope Sony will avoid in the next iteration of the console. Now we understand that the PS5 Slim, like its predecessors in the Slim range, will likely see a reduction in size. However, what we absolutely don't want is any downgrade in performance. Users want a PS5 Slim that can deliver the same high-resolution high-frame rate gaming as the original PS5 without any compromises. Equally important is avoiding overheating issues. While slimming down the console, it's crucial that Sony maintains an effective cooling system. An overheating console can not only lead to drops in performance but could also potentially damage the console over time. Moreover, we shouldn't ignore potential pitfalls when it comes to noise operation. Slimmer designs often compromise fan size and ventilation systems, potentially resulting in noisier consoles. It's safe to say that we all hope the PS5 Slim continues Sony's legacy of quiet operation, enhancing our gaming experience rather than detracting from it. Switching gears to storage, one thing that would definitely frustrate gamers would be Sony sticking to a smaller internal storage size. Considering the steady decrease in SSD prices, it would only make sense for Sony to equip the PS5 Slim with at least 2TB of storage. This would not only offer gamers ample space for their favorite titles, but also future-proof the console to an extent. After all, who wants to constantly manage storage or invest in an external SSD? Now, if Sony decides not to up the internal storage, then they should at least consider updating the PS5 software to support a wider range of external SSD drives. Yes, you heard me right, and before you jump to the comments to explain why this might not be possible, let me share some interesting facts. Take Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart as an example. The PC version of the game doesn't even require a high-speed SSD to play. Despite the game's marketing emphasizing the necessity of the PS5's super-special SSD to travel through dimensions. This leads us to question if it's more of a marketing ploy than an actual technical requirement. So Sony, if you're listening, a broader compatibility with external SSDs would be a welcome change for many gamers. Let's talk about the build quality, an area where I believe Sony could really up their game. The base PS5, while impressive, has drawn some criticism for feeling a bit plasticky and lightweight, which is something I hope we don't see in the PS5 Slim. What we're really hoping for is a device that doesn't just feel sturdy but also carries a premium feel to it. Given how often we handle our consoles, durability is crucial. We don't want the plastic to creak under a slight pressure or to see any bending or warping over time. Moreover, a higher quality build isn't just about durability, it's also about aesthetics. We'd love to see a matte black finish with shiny black accents providing a sleek, modern, and refined look. This would make the PS5 Slim not just a powerhouse gaming console, but also a centerpiece of any gaming setup. Sony should be wary about the possibility of fewer ports in their new slim version. As we've seen with other consoles, slimming down the design sometimes means reducing the number of available ports like USB, HDMI, and Ethernet. Lastly, the question of price always looms large. While we'd naturally expect the slim to be cheaper than the base version, setting a high price point could deter potential buyers. After all, this is a PS5 Slim. Offering it at a lower, more accessible price point would surely make the PS5 Slim more appealing to a wider audience. Personally, I think it shouldn't exceed 349 US dollars, although right now everything is pointing out at 399, which to be frank, I'm okay with. Anything over 399 will be a deal breaker for most consumers. What do you think the price should be considering everything we touched upon? What are the things you're hoping Sony will avoid in the new model? And most importantly, what aspects are deal breakers for you? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.